Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a while. Hello and welcome to the dark forest. It's Jackie Cation, and I am your host at the dark forest. The website's JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com, Family Pet Ancestry. Dot com, mostly just JackieCation.com and TheDorkForest.com. <laughs> so a lot of URLs is what I guess I'm saying. You know the credits? The credits are Mike Rickberg. He composed and sang the song you just heard, sang it with his wife, Sarah. He will sing his words to the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio. Vilmos fixes the website, JackieCation.com. On JackieCation and DorkForest.com, there is a donation button. Feel free to use it. If you have some money and you like the show, feel free to throw some money to the Dork Forest. If you don't have any money, you can go to JackieCation.com and use the Amazon banner, which is just a portal to Amazon that you go to from the, the white banner at JackieCation.com. You order like normal from Amazon, and the Dork Forest gets a bit of a kickback, and I thank you for that support. If you want to buy merch, you're welcome to do that. You can get t-shirts, Dork Forest t-shirts, or Ranger of the Dork Forest t-shirt, or a hoodie. I still have some in stock. It is uh, the heat of the summer, of course, but it will be winter again, according to Game of Thrones. So you can order any of that stuff, including my stand-up CDs, t-shirt, and DVD. All of that stuff is available streaming on Amazon and iTunes and Pandora and Spotify for free. But if you want a hard copy, you get it at my website and I will sign it if you like. You can go to Bandcamp and get premium episodes of the show. Premium episodes are shows that are live dork forests and they cost me a couple of bucks to make. So I charge you guys a couple of bucks, but there's always going to be a free episode every week. So don't worry about it. If uh, you don't want to buy live episodes, you're good. There's also some free content on that Bandcamp page. It's thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. Also on JackieCation.com, besides merch and free videos of me doing stand-up comedy and an Amazon banner, there is my stand-up schedule. This week, I am in New York City doing a bunch of shows just around town. You can check my schedule. You can tr- check my Twitter, at JackieCation. You can email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com. And I will tell you where I'm playing, I guess. And uh, other than that, this is a great episode. So by God, let's get into it. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my living room in Van Nuys. It's very glamorous. And uh, welcome to the Dork Forest with Rory Scovel, Hello. previous live guest. Hello, everyone. This is my first time in Jackie Cation's home. <laughs> in my living room. She welcome. Uh, has provided me with a nice coffee. I want you to be fully aware of the sounds you're going to be hearing. <laughs> I'll be partaking clink, in Clink, clink. Yeah, nice ice in the glass. It's... Uh, it's, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Roy Scovel, by the way, R O R Y S C O V E L, if you didn't know, dot com, and it's at Roy Scovel on everything. And uh, he's a, a, one of my favorite stand up comics right now. So I think he used one of the Young Turks. Do you know why? Because I'm 107. <laughs> <laughs> I am 107, guys. I am a 107 pushing 108 this month. It's going to be pretty sweet. But I was like, what do you want to talk about? And you said that you are currently slightly interested in the game of golf. You know, well, when we've talked about doing that, before we're doing the live one yeah. um, a little bit ago, we talked about things I was obsessed with. And I always, uh, whenever I think about stuff like that, I never, like if someone's like, hey, tell a story or do my storytelling show, I, I just don't remember Anything. And so it really occurred <laughs> right. to me that I need to start checking in with myself when you were like, hey, what do you like? And I was like, I don't know. I don't even know who I am. Um, and then uh, when you brought this one up, I was like, oh, I do know that I am currently very self-aware that I'm obsessed with, with the game golf? of golf. Yeah. The game of, do you own your own clubs? I own my own clubs. They're in the All trunk right. right now. That, oh, just emergency I just, I just came from the driving range and putting. Just the putting now? Range. Just now, yeah. Is the dri- now my dad used to take us to the driving range when we were little. Okay. Uh, is there a putting range attached to the driving range? There is. So it's actually pretty That's close to here. Then. Van Nuys Golf Course. Oh, the Van Nuys Golf Course. Yeah, they got a. It's a par three, but they also have a nine hole executive course, which means there's some par fours. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, bringing uh, it up a notch. How, but if I say all this stuff, how knowledgeable of golf are you? Do well, you like golf? Do you follow it? Or? We will back up because I know uh, I took golf in high school because I didn't have a gym uniform. Oh, okay. So. Uh, <laughs> It was, it was the year that I grew out of my sister's gym uniform. So uh, 
<laughs> the, uh, I took all the things that didn't require a gym uniform. Yeah. And so here's what I know. Uh, and I've also played uh, some video games about golf. Yep. So uh, there are usually eight, nine holes. You can play half a game, nine mm-hmm. holes, or a full game, 18 holes. That's right. And um, and then there are, there are a bunch of different clubs. There are a bunch of different clubs, all based on uh, uh, the degree that the the club is is sitting at. For instance, a, a driver that, that I use is? is like ten and a half degrees, so I'm going to hit that further. But if I want to just lob the ball, I use like a fifty six degree or a sixty two degree. So wedge. it's the angle. It's all angles. Everything. It's all. Is it a game of angles? It's a game of numbers, <laughs> okay. angles, distance. I think that's what. I got uh, as a kid. If someone would have tried to talk me into playing golf, I don't. I don't think I would have been into it. I was very into sports. I was okay. into sports, uh, being outside, running around, being an idiot, right. uh, doing anything. So soccer and basketball, because they're both games that are just kind of fluid. They keep going. There's not a lot of stopping. I right. think I was most into that because I'm hyperactive. Okay. Um, at the time, I was hyperactive. Um, right. So if someone would have been like, hey. I want you to learn golf. I would have been like, ah, there's just too much standing around. It's too slow. It takes too long. It's also just me, where I think I might I enjoyed uh, team sports more. Okay. Um, so I, I I don't think I would have ever gotten into it. No one introduced it to me until uh, college. Okay. Uh, a buddy was like, let's just go play golf, and I said yes on the whim of like, because you're like, yeah, let's That's try a that. Nice guy. Exactly. I was like, yeah, let's just go. Let's go try golf. And in my head. So arrogant because I, 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 at the time, was an athlete. I was like, I'll pick this up immediately. And right. you have to learn the hard way that <laughs> it is so difficult. It's a learned skill yes. is what you're telling me. I mean, okay. it is the a millimeter off and your shot is completely different. You know, if you're in your wow. back swing coming through and you don't, you know, if you, if you lean your back up just the slightest bit. Wow. Your club is going to hit that ball way differently. So have differently. you been playing for like 10 years? Or? I haven't. So in, okay. in college, uh, we would go play. Uh, I had my grandfather's clubs. Okay. I never, I didn't take it seriously. Right. Because we could go to the golf course, get the golf cart, and I would, there would be a bunch of us. And okay. it would mostly so be, be like, like there's a bunch day. of beers. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like, we all got beers in the cart. I would, I would get out of the cart. I would hit whatever club my buddy was like, uh, how far is it? Uh, yeah, you should try to hit this one. So okay. I never like, dialed in like oh well how far do i hit which clubs i just didn't care i right. didn't want to like think about it i right. wasn't ever going to be good because <laughs> it was a math problem it was a, is exactly. it a math problem it every is. time you get out of the cart it's a hundred percent okay it's a hundred percent a math problem <laughs> start to <laughs> That's finish fascinating. so only now do am i like enjoying the oh what is the mental aspect of this game <laughs> where it's like oh it's it's less physical and more mental okay uh and maybe older age uh for me at least uh, brings on the that, that's more appealing to me now. Well, I mean, and and, and <clears throat> it isn't. I mean, there is, of course, there's more sitting around mm-hmm. as you age. But the uh, the th- the one thing is is that you can see nuances that you don't see when you're a kid. You're just like, no, I want to hit the ball. Yeah, I'm a ball hitter. That's yeah. my thing. I'm a ball catcher. I'm a ball thrower. Yeah, those are the <laughs> those are your three. And as you get older, you're like. But how does this work? Exactly, yeah. And so then you go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. That's interesting. And it's also, um, you know, for me, who's your, your, your couldn't be more average. You know, if I go out to play 18 holes, there will be a few shots where someone's like, wow, if they only saw those shots, they would assume I'm an amazing <laughs> golfer. Uh, right. And then there's, you know, a plethora of other shots that they would see. They would be like, I don't know if you've ever played golf before. <laughs> So I'm like I'm so average that I'm able to do both of those things and and sometimes keep it's, it right down the middle. Right, and so I think does that feel like that's most everybody who plays the game? I think that is the majority. I think uh, any when you, when you like go play. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is kind of blowing my mind about it right now is that how hard it is and miserable it can make you. It still is. It has this sense of fun that is addictive. I'm I'm kind of an OCD person in the sense of knowing the numbers game of golf now, I want to try to hit a certain number. So, okay. you know, when you play golf, the par is 72 usually on okay. an 18 hole course. On an 18 you're trying yeah. to get to have, and with golf, it's low numbers are better. Low is the best. Um the the each hole is like three to five, right? That's each, what it was in the video game. hundred percent. Yeah. And there's gonna be t- there's going to be four holes that are par three okay. on a golf course, and there's going to be four holes that are par five. 
okay. then the rest are going to be par four. Okay. And for any listener who is unaware of what that means, if yeah. a golf course is uh, 72, par 72, it means it should take you 72 times, 72 Swings. attempts at contacting the ball with the club to complete the course. Okay. I wonder why it was called par. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what okay. that even means. Because because it uh, every time you take a swing at the ball, that counts as a swing, as a stroke, yeah, as a stroke. Mm-hmm. And a par is how many strokes it should take you, or or ideally would take you to get to the hole in the ground yep. where the ball goes. In. Yep. So, <laughs> so if it's a par, three, I want that written in like how to golf, how to play golf. <laughs> the hole, the ball goes in the hole in the ground, yeah. right? The established hole in the ground, not right. a nature created <laughs> hole, not a go. Not <laughs> rando. <Yeah. laughs> Mother Nature cannot be involved in the creation of where this ball is meant to go. No, the Scottish would not approve. <laughs> and so, hole number one. Yeah. How, how long is an average uh, per- first hole? Um, I'm willing to bet that most first holes on most golf course- courses are it's a par, probably a par four. Okay. Hole. Not all the time, but I would say the majority probably is, and it is probably. Depending on which tee you play from. So okay. they have uh, oh. a, a golf course um, will sometimes have a black tee, blue tee, white tee, and red tee. What? And, so, and there's is, also sometimes there's new. also a junior tee box. Okay. So this is the tee box. So it's like if you show up and you're like, I am playing from the blacks, it is like you, that means you are great. Okay, that <laughs> oh, it's like skiing the black uh, exactly the black mountain. diamond. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is okay. like oh, I am, I'm great at golf. That means I'm going to play every single hole I play. This is the maximum distance this hole could be. Okay, I'm playing as far away. Right. Blue is like hey, I'm I'm pretty good at golf. Uh, I shoot pretty well. This will be a challenge. I, I'm at a I point where I play challenged. from like the white tees. And, and all the time, white is the is the one right above junior. It's probably it's actually so the red tees are for women, and then the junior tees are what for happened? children. What happened? <laughs> women well, and children. Let's let's get a let's get a boat. No. I will say it is it is kind of the uh, it it is it's so interesting when I am golfing. Yeah. To think that okay, here's the black tee, blue tee, white tee, red tee, junior tee. Okay. And what is so as interesting is that the red tee is just so specifically known as the women's tees. Like, c- completely based on anatomy of, like, muscle. And right. Women will enjoy this game if they tee off. <laughs> uh, from here, it's just so funny to me that it's like, here, children should play from here. Yes. Women should play from here. Men, here are three options. Where do you think you're at? All right. <laughs> <laughs> like when you step up, and not to, like, step up to the tee box and, and think of... Well, what is the political correctness of how this tee box should be set? Right, right. But when you step up, you're like, well, that is so so strange that it wouldn't just be right, yellow, right. red, white, blue, black. What right. do you think you can accomplish? Exactly. <laughs> like it, like if they opened it up to that, right. it's um, it would probably – I mean, women might gra- – because there is – I mean, clearly there is upper body strength and there is some physiological stuff going on. Yeah. But I, I know that there are women who – who should start at a blue tee or whatever that, you know, yeah. and dudes that insist on starting at a blue tee that yeah. should start at the red tee or whatever. I, I was one of those people. I was like, I play from the blues. Everybody play from the blues. Like, I play from the blues. And it wasn't <laughs> until I started playing with my father-in-law every now and then we would play from the white tees. And he was like, you know, he's like, I play from the whites. I, I'm not going to, I want to enjoy the day. The and then it occurred to me, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I also want to enjoy this. <laughs> why am I, why am I someone who is learning and incredibly average yeah. challenging myself as though someone who gets it? Right, right. I still don't get it. So why am I putting myself in the position of having to be great? Right, you're competitive with a mythological being inside (laughs) that's lurking on top of your brain is what it is. And that that also is, uh, strangely enough, that brings up an interesting point too, is that the other thing I enjoy is that you are only competing with the golf course and yourself. Even if you were in a tournament against 100 people. yeah. You're, it's who plays this course the best. So it's not like even if you are, you and I were playing, we're like, yeah. well, uh, it, it wouldn't be, oh, I beat uh, Jackie. Right. It wouldn't be, you oh, beat Jackie beat me. It would or be. Jackie lost. Yeah. Or I won. It, yeah. It would be, oh, I was able to play this course in this many strokes. Right. And Jackie was able to play this course in this many strokes. And the beauty I'm, of it is that we could then be like, well, let's play 18 more. And it could be beyond the opposite. 
Okay. You know, like right. you could be like, well, actually, I won by twenty strokes, and it's like, yeah, I lost by that many strokes, <laughs> and I just won. I just won. Yeah. Four hours ago, I won. Right. Yeah. And so there are many, many questions have come to mind. One of which is uh, I wrote down, which is h- how do you warm up? Like if it's the, if the first thing is is a par four. Yeah. That's not the easiest. Well, that, it's um. Is it a par four, by the way, from the black tea and from it's, the uh, yeah, all red tea? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So all of it is saying it, this is from this point. You're saying you want to play all the course from this distance. And some of them, the, the tea box just means it's slightly closer. And, yeah. And it's just, uh, they've just shortened the distance. The starting point. Because of you're of newer or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and also, when you look at the scorecard, it does list all those colors, and then it tells you the total yardage of the entire course. Okay. So it's like... If you're going to play from the blues today, yep. you might be playing a five to 6,000 yards in the day. Of course. Okay. Whereas if it's the others and you might, there could be a part of you that's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to cover that kind of distance. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm going to play 3,000 yards or whatever. Yeah. And, and obviously a tee box is at every, <laughs> it's at every hole. That's the starting point. Right. Yeah. But so every hole it starts over, right? Mm-hmm. Black at the furthest point, white or uh, junior at the closest point. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, okay. So, and how do you warm up? Um, you, I don't do this and I need to learn how to, and I I feel like if I had grown up playing golf or took any lessons, there'd be a coach who would maybe explain to me the best way to do this, but an an intense stretch because you are working so much of your back muscles that just for the safety of your own health. Right. Because you're going to throw a shoulder out. Yeah. And, uh, just the, the back being just so core to your uh, entire function of your body. It's like, I should stretch, but so I do that, or and also I should be on the range, the driving range, oh, hitting, hitting certain clubs. Yeah, so I'll like just to get, get the feel of like how how am I hitting the ball today? Reminding yourself how to hit the ball. Reminding yourself how your hands should be holding the club, where your uh, how your feet should be set. Right. Because um, with every club, also, and this will be hard as a visual for <laughs> the listeners, but <laughs> when you're standing. Uh, you know, to the side of the ball that you're about to hit. Yeah. You know, the where that ball is sitting in your stance, you know, if it's my driver, I might have the ball here, and my if this is my left leg, I've got the ball further up in my stance. And then if I'm hitting a pitching wedge, I might be standing here so that the pitching wedge comes through here. Okay. Whereas the driver has so it, hard it, for it, the it, listener it, to know well, that visual. Well, what you're doing is you're <laughs> you're you're moving your where your feet are to line up either with the ball or center from the ball. Center from the ball or in front of the ball or a little behind the ball. So that the angle of the club hits it correctly. Right. So that you're pointed in the right direction. And yep. when it does, it'll aid the where you hit it will aid going in that direction. Yeah. Uh, and I think learning the game of golf yeah. Uh, as you're as you're starting to learn it, the point that I'm at is it, it's so mental because it's like you don't just grab a club and step up and hit the ball the same way every time. You yeah. do have to go. All right. Well, I'm hitting this degree wedge, and I know that I hit this wedge anywhere between 100 and 130 yards. Yeah. That pin is 120 yards. So I need to hit this maybe 110 yards and hope right. that it then rolls the remaining okay. 10 or remaining 5. It's, right. It's, but then also on top of that, while you're doing that math, if you then forget where you should have the ball in your stance, yeah. all that math is, it could just be out the window and, and are, have been useless. Okay. And are there several – now you're talking about the, the degree of the wedge. Is it – are there more than one wedge? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, there's different degrees. Um, you technically should only have 14 clubs in your bag. That is like the USGA rule. The, right. If you choose, were in tournament, you yeah. pick 14. And you clubs. can have any 14 you want. You just cannot have more than a 14. hockey stick. You could have a hockey stick. <laughs> We've all seen the movie. <laughs> We've all, yeah. And uh, so 14 <laughs> clubs. There's wood, right? The woods. So the drivers, yeah. So are your those driver drivers? and your fairway woods. Okay. So those are for your greater distance. You know, your your driver being the club you're hitting off of a tee to really... To get some <laughs> yeah. distance, right? Yeah, yeah, to really set you up for, like, all right, this is my first time hitting the ball. I really want this. To go as far toward the hole as possible. As possible. There you go. However, yep. and this is what's fun, yep. <laughs> is yeah. that you may find yourself as a person who's like, you know, I am great. Whenever I hit the ball at 150 yards, I'm very accurate. Okay. Where you might find at 100 yards, you're not as accurate. Mm-hmm. So there might be a part of you that's like, well, what is the math from this 
my the tee box. Yep. What club do I need to hit to get it to 150 yards out so that my next shot I'm hitting that club? So you might not use your driver every time depending oh, on your strength as a player. Oh, from the original tee. Right. Okay, so but uh, a, a basic first hole, a basic hole is isn't it usually like 320 yards or something? Uh, yeah, it can be. Uh, dep- d- like I said, depending on those tee boxes, but also I would say a normal like par four. It's probably safe to say like 400, 400 yards. yards so yeah. if you could, if you could use a wood and knock it 300 yards. Yeah. But you have to worry about accuracy. At but let's, that point. yeah, let's say you are like, I know I can hit my driver 300 yards, Yeah. but I'm not so great <laughs> with hitting my wedge a hundred yards, Oh. but I am great at hitting my eight iron 150 yards. So there might be a part of it that goes, well, if I want to get to 150, out then I need from... to drive the ball 250 Got yards. It. Okay. So maybe then you don't hit your driver. Because you plan your next move. Exactly. Like in chess, another game <laughs> it, I'm not yeah. good at. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it is a lot like that, especially uh, you know trying to figure that out. Because as you're learning, you'd like to think that you're getting better, which means, oh, you're probably hitting the ball better you know, right. as time goes on, you're probably hitting it straighter, which means all the math that you've learned about your clubs yeah. is now changing okay. because now you're actually hitting it straight. Now all you're right. actually, now you're that you're like, oh, I, I'm hitting it confidently straight. I think I can swing a little harder. I think I can get a little bit more muscle. And it's like, that changes your whole, That's it's, almost like it, it's almost like you have to yeah. delete, ooh, you almost have to delete the entire algorithm and say, I'm going to now create a whole new <laughs> right. algorithm. Yeah. Holy crap. Okay. Well, that is that is fascinating, actually. So those are the the woods are also called drivers, right? Does the, that sound right? Or? No, you just have the driver, and then they're just called woods, like fairway woods, okay. really. And those are like a three wood and a five wood, and all of those numbers are yeah, just are basically they just kind of basically coincide with the degree oh. of the of the, the the angle of the club, so that you it it. It kind of informs you of the distance you'd probably hit it. Right. Yeah. It's just a reminder. Right. And and is there a standardized from club to club, like from different manufacturers of clubs? Like, does everyone know a three wood has that degree? You know, that's a good question. I know that drivers, uh, you can get a driver that's like nine and a half degree. Maybe you can go lower than that. Uh, I haven't seen that, but right. I'm sure that that's out there. And then, you know, I have my grandfather's old driver and it's an 11 and a half. Not, a lot of people would be like, I would never use an 11 and a half because I'm really... I don't want it to go as high. I'm really trying to get it far. Okay. Um, the driver that I currently use is a ten and a half. Okay. Uh, degree, but then I'm, I I assume How the far? degrees can vary for the woods too. But I actually just don't know that. Right. So when you go in to buy golf clubs, mm-hmm. like if you want to buy your own golf clubs, you're yep. like you have to be aware of what number degree you're good with. Yep. Or you have to make a commitment to get good with. Yeah. When you get those clubs. Well, the the one thing that is consistent, uh, maybe it isn't so much in the driver in the woods, but like the irons, I think are all the same degree. So if if this is an eight iron, I would s- assume that all the brands, the degree of that eight iron is exactly the same. Like yeah. that is a set. That f- that number. That sounds. Um, and are the irons even numbers in the woods? No, they're all. It's a uh, most irons. It's usually like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and you just buy those like separate. Like if you were going to go buy clubs like right now, yeah, you would buy the driver that you like. You would buy the fairway woods that you like. Oh, you, you would buy, buy one the at a time. irons that you. Well, the irons are the only ones that usually you can buy every separate. single club individually. Yeah. Most people buy like a set of irons. Okay. Um, I would say the people who probably don't are either. And this is kind of crazy because they're yeah. almost on opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> People who don't buy them all together are probably so pro they know exactly what they want yep. or so new and just looking for a bargain that they'll just buy them individually. Right. Which they're... is so crazy that the <laughs> the, yeah, they... the consistency of those buyers, they couldn't be on further ends of the spectrum. Right. What about a garage sale? Is that <laughs> yeah, exactly, something? You're exactly. Like, sure, I'll yeah. buy that and I'll try to figure I'll out how to that. use it. three dollars, you got it. You got it. I'll yeah. try to play with that that club. Can you play with one club? You can. You could play the entire course with just one club if you so desired. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I, think I mean, that some was people have man. recommended. They're like, tin, if you tin cup. Oh, tin cup playing. Think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he did that. They're, the people have recommended. They're like, if you want to get really good with like your seven iron. Yeah. They're like, go play the whole. You know, except for maybe putting, but go play the entire <laughs> course with just your seven iron because then you're just hitting that one club. 
over and over and over again, and you're having to adjust how hard right. you hit it. And stance and all and of that. And stance and everything, yeah. Wow. Well, how, how far does a seven club go, do you think? For me, it goes about a hundred and anywhere between 160 and 170 yards. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Within 10 yards. Yeah. You so know. you people usually calculate, they usually say, like, I can hit my eight iron 150. So then the math is like, unless you know it exactly, which I don't. Right. But the math is like 10 yards as you go up. So like an eight iron, I can hit 150. A seven iron, I actually hit 160. Six iron, 170. Okay. And, and so on and so on. Um, huh. And then it's because I'm not so accurate. Right. It's almost like I could hit my, I could step up and be like, I'm going to now hit my eight iron 150 yards because that's what I need to do. And then I hit it 40 yards. And I'm like, that was awful. It was great though because you had the TV golf voice for a second. I am now going to. I will now embarrass myself in front of anyone watching me do this. Uh, are there certain people that you golf with? Uh, a lot of comics. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. There's a lot of comics who golf that it's fun to go out with. I, I'm getting my like wife into playing. Okay. Um, Does really she have to Really forcing, really forcing it. Really forcing it on really. her. Well, um, as a person who never played board games before I got married, yeah. I am familiar. And I love board games yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think she enjoys it. Yeah. Um, we go to the range, and I, I tell her every time, I'm like, I think I can help you learn how to make contact with the ball, but... Just as a disclaimer, I don't necessarily know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. And she's at a point now where she, I think she is a natural at the game. Okay. Which is kind of she's great a- to see because I, like I said, I really don't know what I'm talking about. I don't right. know why I'm able to do what I do. I think I just had good advice from various people right. as I played. So I try to like take all that that I've heard other people tell me and try to like communicate it to her. And I, I think she just kind of gets it because she, she's very Does good. She- well, I mean, I think from what you're describing of this game, it sounds like if you have a good eye, you mm-hmm. know, like depth perception and pretty good eyesight and a pretty good judge of, of not hand-eye coordination, but eye distance coordination. Yep. Um, if, and those are, those can be taught, but I think that there's also a natural aptitude to yeah. that. So she might have that. Yeah. I so. mean, something that's interesting also is that, you know, there, I've, I've seen this every now and then, like two or three, people who are completely blind who play golf and <laughs> if they're if they do have the ability to understand where the ball is and okay. how to hit the ball mm-hmm. then the the interesting thing about it is that is definitely the hardest part because if someone's like well they can't see the hole it's like but if someone is there to say yes you're in the right position and yeah. yes you are aimed at the hole right then it really is math and it might even there. be a bigger math thing if you tell the right blind person uh you are faced in the correct and and then they they have, I don't know if you know this about blind people, superpowers. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, they so can they, fly, and so that's why they're better at golf. <laughs> they've got, they've got like the wind. <laughs> they can, the they sun's just not know in their that eyes. Stuff. But they, and, because it is such a, you know, if 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 they were like, all right, you're facing the right direction. Yeah. You need to hit it 150 yards. That's yeah. exactly how far away it is. Then that person, without needing to see the hole, if they truly have been told they're aimed at the right. Then yeah. it might be like, well, then give me this club because I will now hit that club. Right. And, that and again, distance. that's a learned skill. Right. Where they're like, the first time they do that, they're like, oh, well, I obviously hit that too hard because yeah. now it is 200 yards away. Yeah. And, uh, but, but as, as a blind person would get better, pointed in the right direction, much like everybody else who is human. Yeah. Uh, they would learn <laughs> to adjust for whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I, 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 I guess I never looked at it that blind? way. No, no, no. Okay. I've just seen it like in like a. Uh, on TV or something? On TV and. and the I, magazine? Do you I get a magazine? I, I get a magazine, Blind Offers a- Monthly. <laughs> Um, that very specific. And so that one is, and it's only a few people in uh, every single uh, every single issue. I, I think I remember seeing it's on the news. just a blow-by-blow blow of the four people that are blind who golf. <laughs> who have chosen and, golf. And they happen to be famous. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just following them monthly. I, I think I saw on like uh, a news clip of a uh, a blind golfer getting a hole in one on a par 3. Okay. I mean there I am more than likely no, going to and the majority of golfers yeah. will never ever do that. A, pa- a par so, 1? I or mean a, just just a getting a hole in one on a par okay. 3. It's it's insanely crazy. I mean even when you see a professional golfer, someone who hits a thousand golf balls a day, yeah. when they do it, you see them also go crazy because right, even the, the person at the highest level is, is like, this is insane. Yeah. Like, this just happened. <laughs> um, 
And then to see a blind person do it. Right. You're like, that is, it. it's so bizarre. It's yeah. so bizarre to know that that's capable without what you would assume is such a uh, Yeah, so let's not kill the handicapped sense. at exactly. an early time because they, it turns out. We need uh, them to do this for we us. We need them to inspire <laughs> us all right. or in themselves. So how often do you golf now? I mean, I, if you're not working every day because it's. Well, because you mentioned comics, a lot of comics get work, yeah, uh, because club owners golf, yeah, and then all of a sudden I'm like, well, I could take up golfing. I did something different. I took up Magic: The Gathering, yeah, uh, in the '90s because the Booker played that. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. less physical. <laughs> uh, but I do kind of wish I had taken up golf because there's a bunch of club. There's a bunch of clubs that you can get work at. Yeah, a bunch of clubs, and uh, I played at the Charlotte Comedy Zone. Okay, have you, have you been on there? Uh, yeah, I opened the- for Maria there. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So the Mike Hall, the 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 manager there. Yeah. He's a golfer and mm-hmm. uh he has a friend who golfs and so we went and played a course two Do you days need in a row. A certain number to like is three a good number to go golfing with or is it is there oh, too uh, many people? You know, usually usually four is the max. There's some courses that let you play in a group of five, but yeah. it also can be miserable to play with too many people because You're waiting. You, there is a timing to the game. Where you don't want to be the people behind you. You want to, you know, as if there's a group in front of you, they've hit their tee shots. Yeah. And now they've cleared the tee box to go hit their second ball. So now you have taken over the tee box. And the etiquette is that after they have now hit their second shot, that's when that you should go, go far enough to the point where when you hit your tee shot, you couldn't possibly hit hit them or get near them. So you should go ahead and hit. And then it just kind of moves. Right. Like when that. do you yell for? Uh, I yell it, uh, <laughs> when, when I hit the ball and it goes way further left or right than I intended. And I'm usually yelling it towards people that are on a different hole. Where you're like, I so sorry. Oh, yeah. But every single golfer has had to yell it and has had a ball coming at them to the point where you truly would only get upset as a golfer. If a ball landed near you and someone didn't warn you where you're like, Hey, the etiquette is just yell four so that I'm like. Oh, yeah. Kind of braced for impact. Yeah, yeah. So to not yell it, you're kind of like, well, now a ball could just, that I could have gotten out of the way out, you know. I could have not got hit. It's just rude to not yell four. Right. Again, we don't know where the word four comes from. Yeah, I don't. I also don't know that. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like these are all things I could easily know, and I've just well, never looked into. It's, uh, there's, I'm sure there's someone who knows <laughs> and that will email me at Jackie at JackieCation dot com, like the origin of the word T, because that's that little wooden thing you stick in the ground. That's also a good question. Yeah, and then you put the ball on top of it. Yep, and then uh, you gotta. It's not police your brass. It's uh, do something with your divots or something. Oh, replace your divots or replace your, di- repa- that, repair that's your a, divots. That's a that's a golf term, right? Yeah. Repair your, so when you're it, when you play into a green specifically, okay. uh, if you're hitting a green is the the green is, is the, the putting, putting green, part, the Got putting it. green. Um, and so to get to get onto the green, there is a good chance you are hitting a wedge, which has a higher loft. A okay. higher lob. That's, okay. That, that, that should be the case. Okay. And so oh, the arc of, of that, the ball. The, the arc that, of the ball. Because the yeah. way you hit it because of the angle of the club. Right. So I'll hit a 56 degree wedge, which means, oh, that ball's going to go pretty high up and come down. The result of which being, it's going to leave a dent in oh. the putting green. Oh, because of the height? We, because of the height. Because it's okay. coming. It's and probably it's, coming straight down. I mean, not straight down, but it's going to be at an angle. And it's going to hit harder. It's going to hit harder, and it's going to have some kind of an impact. And so the etiquette is just to, and you have a little divot uh, repair tool. Okay. The the idea is to go and then kind of fix that so it's flat again. It takes two seconds. The dirt or something. Yeah. Okay. You just just kind of poke around where the divot is, and it kind of brings the ground up, and then you just uh, you just flatten it back out with your putter. Okay. And the idea is that well, now you've repaired that so that you know if someone has to putt. They don't want that in their line. <laughs> no. It's going to ruin their putt. So you're yeah. just kind of like, hey, I repaired that. Uh, but I play all the time, and there's people who they just leave those right. those holes. So that's why when you see professional golfers playing, um, they'll once their ball is down and they're, they're taking a look at the line and how they're going to putt it, you see them walk between the ball and the hole, analyzing so much because they're looking for any, un- any kind of – Anything that's going to disrupt the the, right. the 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 roll of the ball, so they're like trying to make sure it's not going to hit a bump or a divot, yeah, sending it another way, yeah. Because at that level in that competition, you know, all of those strokes matter, right? So much. There's people that lose 
millions of dollars on a weekend yeah. because of one stroke. <laughs> right, because they didn't check. Exactly. And, uh, or or they just, you know, just whatever caused that extra stroke, they then look back and go, oh, for four days, I caught, had an extra stroke. <laughs> and they might, there is yeah. one, one person who could be like, had I just cleared that green a little bit more, right. I might have made that putt. And then who and knows? you're going to think about that for a long time. And then time. who knows how much money that, you know, right, could have right. Been. I wonder if with golf it is like, if it's like stand up where the only thing that could fix a bad golf game is a good golf game. I think it is. Yeah. I think the it's only like thing, that. Bad set, good set. Because even, the... even when you're playing bad golf, um, which I was doing yesterday, I was playing <laughs> poorly, but. <laughs> but you enjoyed it. I, I did enjoy it because every now and then I was hitting the ball well. And I was just like, you know, if I came out and I was not hitting the ball well ever right and like that is the that's bombing where the crowd wants you to die right right um, but hitting it all right you're it's kind of one of those things where you walk away and you're like eh, some of the crowd liked it but right. i have to know that the uh, the rest of the crowd didn't hate me yeah. i just didn't do a good job of of showing them i'm better than what i did right it's a that, that <laughs> right. said is a learning experience exactly and you're like, yeah i see what i did there yeah. that was a mistake i also got so. paired up with an 83 year old man yesterday so that, that that's another thing i enjoy about golf is when i go out by myself yeah to play just to you know you go up to the you know if you make a tea time or whatever if you're alone there's no golf course that's just going to let you play by yourself if someone else also, is wanting to play. They'll okay. put four strangers together. Oh, really? To be like, hey, there's a lot of people that want to play, and if we put you all four together, there's more it's slots. A there's more, a hundred percent. It's all based on timing, like certain tea times that are available. Yeah. Um, so when do tea times start? They can start as early as like five a.m. As long as there's sun. As long as, and not even that. I mean, I've gone out. I've I've teed off at five forty-five before, and the sun wasn't even up, and I just kind of teed off into the dark. I played two holes <laughs> in the dark, and I only did it because I was like, "Well, I want to beat the rush hour," and right. Then, I, then I'm done at nine forty-five, and it's like, "Oh, I still have the whole day, and I still got to go play uh, yeah. four hours of golf." Oh, um, wow. Does it take four hours to play a, an eighteen hole? Three. I mean, it can take even longer depending on the traffic right. out there. But it should take you three to three five? and a half to four and a half. Okay. Four is like the standard. You should get done in four. If you're not getting done in four, you're either playing extremely slowly or people in front of you are playing extremely slowly. Right. And there's nothing you can do about that. Can you play through? That, that is, is another... also a part of the etiquette. So, if you're playing extremely fast and you're behind me and I'm not playing well, and I just notice that. Every single time you're waiting, I see you like, oh, right. she's ready to tee off and I'm hitting the ball three <laughs> times down the fairway. Right. The etiquette is for me to like, you know, from a distance, like kind of give you the come on through yeah, and yeah. then you just play the hole and I just kind of stand aside until right. you're, you're, you've gone through and then I, I play. You, I've taken my two shots. Yeah. And it's more relaxing to let people do that. Like yeah, if that you makes... were playing so fast behind me, it's like. You're going to enjoy the day more if I just let you go because your pace is way different than mine. And it's a half a day we're talking it's about. A it's a long time. Four day, it's a four-hour um, yeah. event. I mean, But, I mean, also if does... you want to warm up, yeah. it's more than four hours. I mean, I, it's, oh, sometimes right. it's – if I want to go golf, you... I try to give myself an hour okay. before. So oh, really? then I also have to get up. <laughs> you know, like oh, I play God. super early, so – Don't you have children? I do. So <laughs> that's why going – that's why I can only go on Thursday and Friday. That's when we have uh, a nanny to, to, yeah. to watch our child. So uh, on uh, – uh, so if I play at like 6.30 in the morning, yeah, I'm going to try to get to that golf course about 5.45. Okay, just so like you can warm, warm up, up a little bit. Take, but, you know, because you want to putt a little bit and, okay. you know, read the, read the green a little bit, see – Sometimes they're, the greens are so thin or super dry that the ball moves very quickly. Sometimes they're really slow, so you kind of want to find out, like, all right, well, what are the greens going to probably be like? Okay. What about AstroTurf? Does anyone ever play on AstroTurf, or is it always yeah. real grass? Well, a lot of driving ranges you tee off on mats, um, which is oh. similar to, yeah, to, yeah. to playing like that, like turf. But that's just mats. the first shot. But well, no, that's just the driving range for like warming up. I oh. don't reckon. It, I mean, that's the majority because that's the cheapest, and that's yeah. also California. A lot of public courses, and because of the drought, it's like, hey, we're a public course, so we're not charging a ton of money. Yeah. And also, there's a drought, so we're not watering the driving range. Right. We're not gonna make sure it's. Or, or you don't care. You're right. just going for. You're practicing distance. At yeah. A driving well, the only range, time right? you do or... care, I start to care now because I, I I realize that it's pretty bad for your elbows because when you're hitting off the grass to warm up. Yeah. If you go way under the ball, you're still kind of going through, and you're just going to you know, oh, go through there's the dirt. grass, whereas yeah. AstroTurf is going to be pushing back against your club, yeah. so there's resistance. 
Got and it. so also you're not when you go out on the course, it's like you're not going to have that resistance. So if you're counting on it, yeah, you're screwed. Okay, because yeah. yeah, that's a learned if if you if you do the dra- driving range a lot, yeah, and then you try to transfer that to the to the actual it, I, course. Yeah, it can definitely change your 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 distance and ha- your style of hitting the. How ball. much is a bucket of balls these days? Uh, fifty balls at the Van Nuys Golf Course is six dollars. Six bucks. Six. That's bucks. not bad. I don't think so. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, my dad would take us, and I think it was like two or three bucks for a bucket of balls. Yeah. And he was like, "You can have a bucket of balls. I'm that kind of guy. Yeah. You knock yourself <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm a cool dad. I'm the so coolest go ahead dad have ever. a bucket. Here's a bucket, and here's a weird club that's yeah. going to be too tall for you, but you knock yourself up. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, that's <laughs> okay. And and so how often are, do you, do you try to go like once or twice? I try to go once or twice a week if I can. Yeah. Um, because I. Uh, I, I, so growing up as an athlete, playing a lot of sports and now being, uh, 35, I still go play basketball. I still play soccer, but you know, as nature would have it, my recovery from those physical activities is way longer. Yeah. Um, so there's a part of me that's like, oh, I definitely can't play soccer or basketball into my seventies, but you know, I just played yesterday with an golf with an 83 year old man who played well. He played well. I mean, you could tell he's played his whole life just to right. have the ability at 83, but it, it just goes to show you, oh, you can – golf is a sport you can play you can keep later playing. in life and enjoy. You know, Did you play nine or, or I 18? I just played nine. He was playing more, but it was kind of a slow course. There were a lot of people in front of us. So, okay. Um, a lot of chit-chat be- between him and I on the tee box because we had to wait for quite a long time. Where did you, did you get to did you get to hear the history of that guy? I got the I got all of it. I got the history <laughs> of Los Angeles. I got the history oh. of that guy. Has he been in Los Angeles for most Grew of his up, life? Born in Hollywood. Oh, good lord! Born in Hollywood. Uh, he's super great guy. That was great. You know that it sounds weird, but I never played golf uh with my grandfather right i don't even know if this guy has grandchildren i was like but here we are in a grandfather grandchild situation that is and it's and i know that we're both not like thinking about that as we're golfing but it's like you're an absolute stranger yeah and we are now going to spend just the two of us (laughs) two because we played nine holes we're going to spend two hours together right playing a game Two people who have never met. We will never talk ever again. Right, but for the next gonna... two hours, yeah. we are partners in yes. this game of golf. Yeah, and it's and it's sort of like a it's a that is it's like a an old guy like like getting a generational kind of moment. Yeah. It's a little slice of well now we went to one of our neighbors died and we went to the funeral mm-hmm. and um we we're standing next to she was very old and we st- we were standing next to a very old man at the funeral and it was over at Forest Lawn over in Burbank mm-hmm. and he said you know the old guy the old guy says to Andy and I you know you can't be buried in this in Forest Lawn in in Forest Lawn graveyard if you live in Burbank and we're like what is why, it, is, that? why is that and he goes <laughs> Well, you know, if you're alive in Burbank, they're not going to bury you. And I was like, wow, that is some graveside humor, my friend. That is, that guy was <laughs> genuinely like late 80s. <laughs> I think I, we, we weren't his first funeral. <laughs> he was, he has sharpened that bit over a number of funerals. <laughs> And <laughs> right, that is a tight. I don't know these two. I'm gonna throw them the the A stuff first. Let's <laughs> right. see. Why not? Yeah. Maybe we will become friends. Yeah. Why would I throw them the C material? I could lose them. I could lose them completely. <laughs> they don't know me. I'm not even gonna say my name. I haven't even been introduced. <laughs> and the only, Andy has been telling that joke ever since. Like at any opportunity, Andy yeah. Ashcraft will bring up that joke. Uh, oh. I I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> let's talk more about golf. Here's my next question. Yes. What uh, do you – have you done a lot of different courses? Oh, can I, I – there was yeah. something I was going to say. Oh, yeah, please. But So to – in talking about not being able to play soccer and basketball anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't know that I would care so much about the improvement as a golfer. I mean, granted, I have been bitten by the bug and I am an addict and because <laughs> – it's all about making your score less and less, and I have sort of an OCD about that. Right. Uh, like when I play Galaga, yes. it isn't so much like, oh, I'm loving Galaga. It's like, 
there's a perfection to wanting to clear the universe of all these space bug <laughs> spaceships. You know what I mean? It's like right, you're on I, task. Yeah, in my head, I'm like, I am exterminating all of these <laughs> little flying bugs, and I'm going to, and I'm, and, and there's I'm something about do the best job ever. Yeah, those type of video games suck me in more than any video game uh, ever. Right. Um, but and and so and they golf are task is similar. Yeah, 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 and so golf is similar of like uh, trying to get to perfection. Uh, okay. Trying to achieve it, um, and being in the business that we're in, yeah, there is the opportunity to play with professional golfers in pro am tournaments, oh, right? For which, charity, for sometimes. charities, and you usually play on a Wednesday, Tuesday, or a Wednesday before they play their real tournament. Yeah, and there's you can not that this is always the case, or that you'd ever get invited, but. If you fall into the category of celebrity, which mm-hmm. you and I both know can be from, is such a huge range. Oh, that is a, that is quite a long line graph. That exactly. Is- <laughs> and, and, and I don't know that they are so, you know, not every single tournament is like, let's get A list celebrities. They right. might not even be able to get C list celebrities. Right. Um, but, I was a celebrity on a on, on a charity D and D game. Yeah, uh, over o- over in Indiana, Pathfinder. Sure. I didn't even know that existed. No, me neither. And little did I know, th- nobody knew it. Is that a circuit of things? Uh, like it a, is a, a thing that they do for charity. It's a Pathfinder oh, I game. I like that a lot. It's a, it was really fun. Yeah. Anyway, but, um, but so have you got? To- it's, so it's similar to that. It's similar yeah. to someone saying, "We think you're a celebrity. Would you like to go?" <laughs> so so. If you're invited yeah. and they say, and you get Jackie, for free. we want you to come and play D&D, mm-hmm. so there's a part of you that goes, am I good at this? Will I embarrass myself? that I won't win this, right. or will I? But will I be the worst? So with golf, I'm the same thing. I'll go, well, if someone were to say, hey, you're on a TV show, or hey, we know you're stand-up, yeah. so we want you to come, and you know, you end up playing with people who paid to play with a celebrity, so yeah. it's all going towards charity, and you, you just need to be entertaining, so for me, it's like, oh, I would love to go and joke around. I just don't want to be so bad. So right. in my head, I'm like, if I can get myself to very average, yes. I'll probably play just like the people I'm paired up with. Right. And then if I'm making jokes and they're finding it entertaining, and it, you know, if if I'm so fortunate that they would recognize me, because then they would actually enjoy it more. Right, right. Then they'll laugh even yeah. harder. So there's a part <laughs> of me who wants to get better because that opportunity is actually uh, realistic. It's like, oh, because I'm in entertainment, I could get to play. You could in get a professional a, setting, whereas right. I'm never going to be a professional golfer. But this is the closest I can get. So there's a part of me that's like, oh, I, I should strive for that because I do enjoy it. And, you know, some of these things, they fly you in. They put you up. And right. because we do stand-up, it's like, well, hey, what if I did a show Saturday night? They might be like, great. So yeah. let's, let's get you here. Let's yes. get you performing. You know, so... I have no idea how realistic everything I just said is for me as an right. opportunity, but I know but you're that ready if, for it. <laughs> yeah, so I know that if like oh, I'm decent at golf, then if if things take off in my career, it's like if someone said, "Hey, there's a, a celebrity pro am golf tournament," then I'm like, I would love to be in a position where like, oh, maybe they would be happy to have me. Yeah, and I know how to play golf. There you go. Yeah. Well, which is what the Pathfinder thing is, because it's a it's essentially it's a uh, spinoff. It has it's like D and D, but it's a different. Uh, core group or whatever. Right. Core mechanics. And uh I was like, yes, I will I will be in your celebrity Pathfinder game because I know what that play sheet looks like. Exactly. Yeah. I won't completely embarrass myself. Which though, is and you'd be and you know in your heart you're like, if I showed up and I don't know and I just ride the fact that I'm a celebrity, oof. they will hate me. They will hate me. Yeah. And so I showed up, I knew most of what I was doing and I was funny. Yeah. So those were my two tasks. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and that's, that's all they wanted. That, they were yeah. like, she's doing exactly what we want. She knows how to play and she's entertaining everyone as she does it. That's perfect. Yeah. Let's yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. Maybe we raise twelve more dollars for the Red Cross exactly. or whatever it was for. But uh it was for the Red Cross. It was for uh, the Red Cross. Uh, yes. So what about <laughs> courses? So have you have you tried to do a different courses around Los Angeles? I've played a bunch of different uh courses. There's uh there's one I go to a bunch, um, Balboa, not too far from here. Yeah. Uh, right. Encino Balboa sure. uh, course. They're public courses, and Balboa is pretty easy. So it's great for me to like get my self esteem up yeah. and not be too challenged. And then it's fun for me to also be like, all right, let's go play a place like Rustic Canyon, which is going to be more expensive. It's way in more park. It's way out there. Okay. But it's a way more difficult course to be like, all right, well, how do I fare when it's not as set up to succeed when There's it is a, trying to challenge you. a fancy course over in Toluca Lake off of the street that the smokehouse is on. 
It's I, a dead end. I know it's what a, it is. This, it's a rose, and uh, and right off, you know how like I'm, olive, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the smokehouse, and then rose, and then there's uh, an eighteen hole golf course, which is a private club. Okay, and it backs up into Bob Hope's old house, which has a three hole golf course built into it. Right, and when I say house. I don't mean house. I mean Bob Hope's whatever, compound. I mean, and he I, has his own airport. Yes, and, it's, <laughs> and his wife, who is now 112, still lives there. Is and his wife still alive? I believe so, yeah. Oh, man. What age did he die at? 101, I believe. Is that true? That is true. I believe he lived to be over I know, 100. I don't know much about Bob Hope other than golf fanatic and uh, USO Right. Well, um, here's stuff. what here's what I learned. I used to drink heavily over on Lancashire and Moore Park. There was a place called the Steak Joint with a Y. Yeah. And there's a big Catholic church there. Yeah. And I was drinking there one day, and a guy told me. So this is anecdotal, whether or not it's true about Bob Hope, is that the church that's across that the Steak Joint's gone now, but uh, that giant church on what I believe to be Lancashire and whatever Moore Park uh, is. That guy called it the church that Bob Hope's infidelity built because he had a deal with his wife because she was Catholic and he was Church of England. Yeah. That every time he cheated on her, he had to donate to that church. Yeah. That church, if you ever drive by it, is enormous. It's so it's big. It's made of gold. It's made of gold. There's an auditorium attached to it. There's a basketball court. They There's have, a school. They have a professional <laughs> Uh, they have a professional basketball team there. Uh, across the street from it, there's a community center and a parking lot. I mean, it goes on for blocks. And then from there, she was like, now you have to donate an airport. And so right. he exactly. really cheated a lot. He cheated a lot. And then across from where their their, their compoundy thing is, there was a, an empty lot that that guy told me also that she kept that empty lot as hers. <laughs> yeah, right. And she was going to build a, a convent. Oh, really? And just recently, like three or four months ago, maybe six months ago, uh, they broke ground. They're building McMansions there. Oh, okay. And uh, so he's dead. Yeah. She's like, well, I can't hold that over him. Let's, yeah. uh, the kids are <laughs> well, probably. He's not cheating anymore. Exactly. I assume. I assume. I don't know what's up after this. Up in heaven, he's yeah. Lana Turner. <laughs> and uh, so, but it was one of the, the greatest <laughs> stories of Hollywood. That, that's the only one I know. But he has supposedly a three-horse golf course. Three horse? Uh, three horses. Three, three whole golf course on I his. I love that. Well, how great would that be, I mean, be, that's right? how you get good. I thought about that uh, yesterday when I was sitting there um, with my new best friend, who's 83. Right. Uh, we were just sitting waiting for the group in front of us, and I was like, if you had one, if you had one hole at your house that was like 400 yards, you would become so great at golf. Yeah. I think you would. Because if You'd you, become if you just pretty good at that it hole. Over and over and over again, you would be like, you would build the confidence of how to play. Right. A hole. Like, I'm going to now drive the ball. I'm going to now hit this mm -hmm. club. Because if it's your own hole and you can practice on it as much as you want, yep. you can set the ball at any distance and work on that distance. Yeah. Um, oh, right. Because you can work on the distance. Yeah. And be like, oh, Because that's gonna... the whole game to some extent, it's... is being able to judge how far you can hit the ball. Right. And you want to be... So, like, uh, so for a par four, uh, if you're ever watching golf and they say greens in regulation, that means on a par four, it should take you two shots to be on the green. On the putting green. On the putting green. Two shots to get to the green. Two shots. On okay. a par five, it's three. Okay. So the reason why uh, when you see assume... professional golfers who, when they get really wowed by distance, uh, Tiger Woods, for instance, that's a guy who, when he plays a par five, there is a very good chance he is going to be on in two shots on a par five. Okay. Meaning that he is... He's, he's a shot gaining, ahead of... Yeah. That if he's a good putter, yeah. it's like he's gaining even that many strokes yeah. over who he's competing with and it's right. like and his uh consistency i mean are the greens the same multitude size? of reasons why he's great uh but okay. that consistency is why you see someone like him winning over and over and over and over it's like oh he has sheer power to gain strokes in yeah. this kind of situation huh. um the greens are all different okay and every single if there's a tournament at a golf course and it's going to be four days, mm -hmm. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Each day, they are going to move where the hole is on each green to a different location. And a lot of tournaments, Sunday is when they put it in, like, the toughest location Spot. on the green. Yeah. So, hole number one. Yep. Or let's go hole number six, because oh. what the heck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hole number six 
each day in a four day tournament, and you have to play every day for a tournament. So if you're in a tournament, yeah, uh, you you are you you're playing. You're a professional golfer. Yeah, you are playing on Thursday, and okay. you're playing Friday. Okay, and then on after Friday's round, half the field gets cut. Okay, and you so, don't even play. So the others get to play all four days. Okay, and I do. I haven't checked on this, but. This is probably not right, but maybe it is. I don't know. If you don't make the cut, I think you don't get paid. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, uh, kind of prorated. Yeah. There, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's sort of a reflective world with how we operate in stand up. For instance, yeah. when um, as you and I both know, when you're starting out, if you get a gig. You then can't go, well, there's money to spend. You almost have to be like, well, I might have to buy a flight for another gig where I'm going to break even. And if I keep spending the money right. on, on anything other than necessity, then I may ruin that bank that goes towards stuff. And like golfers, uh, if you're on like the web.com or if you're low on the PGA Tour, it's a tour because you are going – city to city on weekends and if you're not qualifying you're not making any money and you're paying out of your pocket. caddy 10 percent. so you when you see something like 10 cup and you're like oh he dr drives his rv up and camps out at the at the course like that's that's also what the best golfer currently jason day does with his family he lives out of a camper and drives to a lot of like places now he's at a point Financially, with endorsements and winning, where he doesn't have to now right, do that. Right, he could probably stay at a Hampton Inn. Right, and uh, he could finally get Hampton Inn status. <laughs> right. And who knows what their rewards are? Uh, free, free cup and a waffle. <laughs> free <laughs> cup and a free waffle. lobby Wi-Fi. Let's not forget. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Never surrender. Um, yeah, that's okay. Oh, wow. So they're not necessarily making money. Yeah. And they're playing for – so if they play Thursday and – so if you play Thursday and then you play Friday and yep. you are in the top half of the people, then you keep playing. You get to keep playing. You play Friday and then – is it cut again? Nope. Just It goes one all cut. the way. One two, cut. After two days, there's a cut. And then two more days. Two yeah. more days of play. And so what dictates that cut is let's say uh, Thursday and Friday, everybody's now played two rounds and the person who's winning is eight strokes under par. Okay. For two days. Okay. And par then, is 72. Par 72. You have a 66. Yeah. You have okay. a 66, and uh, or, or, but it's also like the the sum of your scores. Okay. So, so it's a par 72, and you're like, oh, I shot a 70, and then I shot a 68. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, so you're six under par. par for the two days. Yeah. Got it. Two, and it, it's uh, – so to win a tournament, it's the total of – It's cumulative. Of, yeah, it's cumulative. Okay. Um, and then – so if the if the the leader for the weekend is currently six under, the spectrum is now going to be huge. There's going to be someone at the bottom who's plus fifteen, who's just yeah. had a nightmare. So <laughs> based on that that spectrum, that's what dictates where the cut is going to be. So that on Friday they might curve. be like sort of. I mean, because they're like, well, if it's six under, this many players were able to be one, you know, all the way to like even par. So they might be like, even par is the cut. So they don't cut it in half. It's not necessarily cut right in half. Like if there's 30 it, players, 15 close, don't move on. As close to half as possible. But they, they want it to be as close to half as possible. Okay. And what, but, but there is a, a, a give or take based on how, how many people fit into the top score. Yeah, there's only so many slots available. Oh, right. And a lot of people, there'll be nine people who are aren't even par. Yeah, and you're like, well, we can't have all of them. You can, but so if the if the if the cut is par, yeah, that means all nine they make it. Okay, meaning that you then go, okay, we have to distribute the spots out accordingly and the tee times accordingly. So on Thursday, at any hand, I don't know how interesting <laughs> this this part oh, is because it's is very fascinating, this yeah. is very like meticulous. But on a Thursday at a tournament, there's so many golfers, like 120. Okay, so that when they say, all right. So the first group is going to tee off at 7 a.m. Okay. That means four people are going to tee off on hole number one at 7 a.m. Yeah. And four people are also going to tee off on the 10th hole and play the back nine to start. Because there's so many people. Oh, they right. They got to get like this kind of rotation like this. Right, right. Going yeah. to get them out of the way. And then when you so get to. So somebody might play the, the back nine first and then right. the front nine. And then the front nine. Yeah. And then when you get to Saturday, now you've made the cut and you've got rid of half. Now there's no longer groups of four. It's usually now groups of two. Okay. Yeah, and so sort of an exciting thing is that on Saturday and Sunday, the the final group that's going to tee off for television purposes yep. is who's ever in the lead, under the assumption that that's who we're going to want to see on TV. So let's all keep them the way to the end, right? Because they're competing, and and so it 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 makes 
it's likely that someone of one of those two people, or maybe the group before them, or the group before them, is going to be like, the champion, justifying why we're still watching it right. <laughs> occur on TV. Right, and and to so, so to some extent on Sunday they two two and two it the top six players. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Just yeah, yeah. because uh, probably one of these six people is going to win. Yeah. No, that's okay. who's going to be teeing off like last. And that'll be like probably like at one thirty or 2 o'clock. Do you watch uh, golf on television? I watch it every weekend. Every I watch weekend. It. I, I, it is. When someone goes, oh, it's boring to watch golf, I 100% get it. I grew up playing soccer. So because I played soccer and I understood soccer, I loved watching soccer. And I right. had to grow up in around people who would be like, this is so boring. The scoring is so ridiculously low. I absolutely hate this. And I'm like... Because you're just watching for points, I'm right. able to see the game. The game that yeah. is like happening outside of the points. The drama of the rest of it. Yeah. Comedian it, Gilbert Lawan, do you know him? No. He was out of Atlanta and now lives in New York. He made such a great point. He's like, Do you know if he's like, if a soccer game ends three two and people are like, Well, that's only five goals that happened He's like, yeah, it's kind of like a football game ending twenty-one to fourteen, but you don't complain about that. Right. But you but but when people watch pro football, they're like Oh, it was, they, no one goes, oh, it was only 21 to 14. They go, oh, but it was so much football was played. It's like, it's the same in both. There's right, so right. much to watch still outside right. if, of just the goals. Yes. If soccer was seven points a, a goal, would it be more exciting <laughs> Ex for you? Exactly. Would that yeah, be yeah. more fun? Andy has, uh, he shares season tickets with some friends to the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. So he yeah, goes yeah. a bunch. Yeah. And um, so he likes it. I've been to two games. Yeah, yeah. Bye. I don't know a lot about it. It's it, that's the thing. If, if if it's a sport that not even that you necessarily had to like play it, but if you don't know what to watch for, yes. And then if someone even explains to you what to watch for, it doesn't even it doesn't mean you're going to like watching that aspect of it, right? But uh, so growing growing up with golf because I never played it, I didn't really like when my grandfather or dad and uncle when they would watch golf at like family barbecues. Yeah, I could not understand how they could do it. I was like, this is so boring. Nothing is happening. But now that I've played it and I understand it, I know what they were watching. They, they were what they like, were looking for. Yeah. They were, you know, seeing a professional golfer hit a ball from 200 yards away and land it within a foot of a <laughs> hole. You now respect how difficult that truly is to do. And right. a professional golfer from 200 yards away might land it a foot from the hole because they hit it past with backspin, knowing it would then come back towards the hole. And you see that and you're like, that is so in to be able to do that. It's yeah. so incredible. Right. That you now when you watch it, you, there's some, you, I understand what the entertainment truly is now. Right. I remember um, my dad watching it and just it was just soothing. Yeah, it just—it's like watching fish to some extent. <laughs> it, it, it is it's soothing. Very, yeah. very nice. <laughs> yeah, I watch every every weekend, and uh, now I know who like the players are, who to cheer for, who I like, who is it, it? Pros? It, is it? Is it? I, um, college? What it's you, mostly pros. I have I've watched college when it's on. I watch yeah. uh, I watch the men's PGA. I watch the women's LPGA. I watch uh, college uh, the web dot com right tour, which is like the semi pro. You know, okay. people that are on the web dot com tour. Those are people making very little money, and yeah. I think to qualify for a PGA Tour card on that tour, you have to win two tournaments. Oh, really? And that is insanely difficult to do, and then get to be in the PGA is like, you know, that this is their dream. These are yeah. these are golfers that, you know, for the most part are out of college. They, yeah. They golfed in college, and now they're like, well, let's see if I can become a professional golfer. And like a lot of pro sports, there's going to be a lot of heartbreak. You're not yeah. going to make it. You're not going to make it. Yeah. A friend of, a friend of Andy's uh, who he went to college with – is about five or six years ago started touring with golf. Oh, okay. His name's Chris Winslow. Yeah. Uh, and he has won some tournaments. And I don't know this. I don't know if he's on. I sound about seven <laughs> years old. I I know someone who does stand up. I don't know. Do you know him? Here's he, one of his bits. If you want to do it, he has this great <laughs> club that he does. But he, I don't know. You might one day see the name Chris Winslow. Yeah. But it occurred to me at minute fifty nine. I bet you he'd be a pretty good golf dork to talk about too as well. I'm, I'm going to look into his name for sure. sure it's always fun to like find new names and, yeah. and, and, and cheer from, for the under. It's such a great sport to cheer for the underdog too because it's such a hard Yeah, and sport. he's from Phoenix. And okay. uh, so it's, I mean, have you ever gone to, uh, have you ever played? Arizona has a lot for, uh, for, a, for a state that has no water. I want to do more. I want to try to get to a point where I'm able to take my golf clubs with me uh, when I go out. Uh, right. On the road. The only difficult thing is 
I can only just yeah, I, <laughs> luggage, but also I can only justify in my head if I'm like, oh, I have an hour together and I don't really care. I'm here to golf. Okay. And I think in my head, I I think I've established in my own mind that if I do that too often, will I will then say I <laughs> will not accomplish any of my goals <laughs> because I've now just said, oh, I've made it to the middle. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> now let's enjoy retirement <laughs> way too soon in life. I think that's what I'm convincing myself will happen. You know, I uh, opened for, for Bamford and, uh, and I was like, anywhere you want to drop me off, by the way, you're just telling, I mean, because she could skyrocket to the top, right? And she's still working to become super famous. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, you just, I'll ride a coattail to the middle. That's just fine. <laughs> that seems to be working out for me. And Rory Scoble, by the way, is at RoryScoble.com. Oh, wait, it's at Rory Scoble or it's RoryScoble.com. Yep. And you have a, a, a giant tour in September, or that's when your next big to- yep. run is, so right? So I, I currently, two things that coincide. September 2016, by the yep. way. Yep. I have a, a special that's out now on RoryScoble.com, and this tour in September that I'm doing, I'm going to shoot another special at the end of it. Okay. Um, so I'm, I decided, I was like, I'm going to go on the road and, and do... Uh, some places I've played before, some places I haven't been before, all to just uh, uh, sharpen it all up and get it ready so that I can shoot it all at the end of uh, September. Oh, that's um, great. So, yeah, that's my, my goal. I'm going to uh, do a new album tour. in December. Nice. Where, where are you doing it? Acme. Home, oh, yeah. Home yeah, club. Yeah. That's where I always... Uh, but the Charlton Special, Charleston yep. Special, is the name of your special available at murrayscoble.com yep. uh, for download or streaming, probably. And um, Rory Scoble, uh, th- this has been fascinating. I have learned uh, about <laughs> golf. Okay. Yeah. And it's been great. Thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you for having me and letting me uh, go through the therapy of getting these words out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry that the Dork Forest t-shirt that you are getting for free is not a golf shirt. <laughs> that that would work. be perfect. Yeah. That would be <laughs> a perfect so, setup. Uh, hey, Rangers, you know the rules. Take care of each other out there. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?